to do. A lot of the guys down there, Chris Adams, of course, there were a lot of assholes too. Matt Bourne, uh, uh, Matt, uh, Matt Bourne was down there, the guy that went on to become a dork. He was a, a real dickhead. Uh, Buzz Sawyer, you know, was a real nutcase. I mean, those guys were really malicious. They really tried to hurt you. Um, Bruiser Brody, I mean, a lot of guys that aren't around anymore. I mean, I haven't written my book yet, a lot of the stories about them. You mentioned Bruiser Brody. What was it like working with him? Bruiser had his spot in the business, but he was a conniver. He was always trying to figure out an angle to work at all the territories and screw everybody over. He was a... Um, um, well, he liked to bum off people. He would never get his own hotel room. He would never, you know, he, he, you go out with the guys or something like that. He was never the one to offer to, to do the right thing and pay for something. And um, he was always scamming. Yeah. You never knew, and he was always looking out for himself. Like there's another guy that's deceased now, the guy named Jeep Swinson who did the Batman movie and ended up dying of a heart attack a few years ago. Bruiser brought him in when he was doing Red River Jack. Right. And I was working the thing with Red River Jack, but uh, he was a baby face. And he, he had this desire. I mean, he told me in the locker room one time that he wished that he was a heel. I mean, a guy wished he was a heel, he tells me in the locker room. Well, be a heel now. <laughs> you know what I mean? you got to be a heel to, to make a point of that. You know, you got a problem with me in the ring, but they brought the Jeep Swinson guy in to sort of, he was really green. And we used to, I mean, in Texas, it was a shoot down there. And at the time, I was kind of, I, you know, I didn't quite understand. I, I like working sniff and stu you know, stiff and a little snug anyway. And, uh, but they used to use the chairs and they would lay them in with the intention of putting me out of the business. Um, are you aware of what Hulk Hogan wrote in his in his autobiography about the match? No. He said that afterwards, it was un he took the championship belt, came back to the ring and handed it to you in an unplanned, in an unplanned moment. Oh. And his reason for this was to get sympathy for himself and take the focus off you because he knew at some point he was going to be coming back. Mm. What do you think about that? Well, I think that um, Hogan's whole life has been a work. And there's nothing about his life that was, that's ever been unplanned. So he probably had it planned out from the beginning. Um, where, where, what's your take on Jake Roberts? Because he's, he's a character in the business and a person in the business that everybody seems to have a million stories about. So what do you Well, I think Jake has probably revealed more stories and more of the substance about himself than anybody else could add to it. I mean, he's a liar, he's a lech, he's a loser. And um, there's not much more to say. At that time, Ric Flair came in which first time we worked at WWF, he did matches with you and Randy and a bunch of other guys. Mm. What were your thoughts on dealing with Rick and working with Rick? And Well, Rick is a two-faced person. You know, he's two-faced. I mean, um, he's, you know, made comments that he couldn't have matches. I thought he was the best. Yeah, he... Um, I thought he could work with anybody. I thought guys like Rick Fair could work with the broomstick. Right. I think it says more about him than it does about me. I think he's a... Uh, I don't think, uh, different than a lot of people think, that they admire his tenacity to want to stay in the business for so long and stuff. That's a, I don't think that's a thing to admire. I think it's a little embarrassing, and it's become pathetic, and uh, he should uh, you know, be a real man and have found something else to use his, his notoriety in a, in a more productive way instead of staying in the ring. How would the company change from the last time you were there? It hadn't really. No. I mean, there was the click going on between Nash and Hall and those guys, and those guys are scumbags. Right. I mean, they're they're just uh, you know the the kind of ribs and stuff that they would play and tearing people's stuff up. And there's always they always got ulterior motives to destroy people instead of concentrating on what they have to offer and what they can do. They got to play both sides and try to, you know, damage other people's abilities from the backside. 